What's new from Apple? There's the new iPhone 16 Pro, built for Apple intelligence. And it comes with the all-new camera control, giving you an easier way to quickly access your camera tools. The new Apple Watch Series 10 has our biggest display and our thinnest design ever. And this? It's the sound of active noise cancellation, now available on one of two new AirPods 4 models. So quiet. Check out all of the new products and new features at Apple.com. You can even buy yourself something new. See Apple.com for product availability updates. Apple Intelligence coming this fall. You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. And now, with the conclusion of this week's Sonic Summerstock Playhouse, Mr. David Alt. Welcome back to our Sonic Summerstock stage for our 13th season. Please take your seats. The esteemed Mr. Pete Lutz and the Narada Radio Company players are ready to continue with Act 2 of 20th Century. And now, Act 2 of Candwell Playhouse's production of 20th Century, starring the Narada Radio Company. Come in. Are you down, OJ? And almost out. What was the name of the menace singer who cracked about, it's always darkest before the dawn? I don't know, Owen, but he was an ass. Did you ever hear of a female entitled Lily Garland? Don't be humorous, Owen. OJ, suppose, just hypothetically, of course, that you, Mr. Bromo, could get together again with Miss Seltzer. I wouldn't take that woman back if she and I were the last people in the world. And the future of the human race depended upon it. Besides, she's 2,000 miles away. No, she ain't. She's right on this train. O'Malley, you're a liar. Okay, but she's right in there on the other side of that connecting door. I wonder if she's doing this deliberately. I shouldn't think so offhand. (gasps) Owen, it's a miracle. What? She made the first move, being here. I'll meet her halfway. I'll make the supreme gesture. You mean you're going to let Lily Garland work for you again? How did you guess that? I'm going to forgive her. Well, as a matter of fact, sire, we've already broached the subject to her. What did she say? Tell me everything. You know her. She screamed like a fishwife. (laughs) That's a good sign. She blew up, eh? That shows the battery isn't dead. Now, you didn't give her any false idea about her being necessary to me, did you? Not a word. Are you sure? We just talked some good horse sense into her. (laughs) That's fine. Where's Oliver? You fired him. Oh, he's taking advantage of that, is he? There are only two musketeers left. Very well. We'll work all the harder. Now, I want you to send a wire to Maurice the florist in Toledo, and tell him to send every gardenia he has in the shop to drawing room... uh, What's the initial? B, as in bug house. Drawing room B, this car. And there's a message I want to go with those gardenias. Take your pencil out. I'll give it to you. Okay, ready. To my little Madonna of the Snows... No, wait a minute. We we won't use that this time. Uh, Put that bottle down, Owen. It's very distracting. (sighs) I've got it. From the grave of someone you loved yesterday. (laughs) How's that? A little on the sad side, isn't it? It's perfect. Wish I could get playwrights to write like that. Can I have a little sip now, OJ? So, Oliver thought I was through, did he? Well, it had all the earmarks of a crisis. That's when I'm at my best, with my back against the wall, disaster staring me in the face. Joan of Arc, the bride of Baghdad, a desert love, no money, no credit, my theater, everything gone, everything but the name of 
Chaffee. They got me down, but I'm like a prize fighter who gets up at the count of nine, staggers for a moment, and then leads with the fury of a wounded lion. You've seen me in action before. I don't have to tell you. It's been my privilege several times, sire. I'm going into action now. Don't interrupt us no matter what happens. Oh, darling. Darling, remember, we love each other. Who is that? Oh. That fellow kissing her. (gasps) This is the final irony. Mousing around with boys after Oscar Jaffe. I always knew she'd head for the gutter. I can't stand it. My heart's breaking. Conductor! Where's the conductor? Conductor! Aha, Sadie. Come here, you. Uh-huh. Who is that man with Lily? Who is he? What's his name? I don't know. Yes, you do, you Matahari. Is he going to New York with her? Is that my fault? Did you want me, Mr. Jaffe? Did you hear that, Conductor? There's a law in this country about riding on trains. I call on you to invoke it. What? Stop the train! I want that man in drawing room B thrown off! Nobody can stop this train. Oscar Jaffe is telling you to stop this train! Oscar Jaffe or no Oscar Jaffe, fire, floods, or blizzards, this is the 20th century, and we get to New York on time. Now... If you'll just go in and relax, you'll feel much better, I'm sure. Kissing her! Come back here, you. Hold him, Flanagan. That's not necessary, gentlemen. I'm harmless. I'm a well-known businessman, conductor. Here, that's my line. Sunshine fruit tablet. I'm president. I'll pay for anything I've done. I'm, I'm so ashamed of myself, I can hardly talk. What's the idea of running around pasting those stickers? Did I put up many of them? Why, the place is plastered with them. Oh, dear. Is your name Matthew J. Clark? Yes, sir. Hmm, got a wire here concerning you. Is it from my nephew? It's signed Harold Clark. That's he. Does it convey the fact that I'm a little crazy but perfectly harmless and that he will meet me in Cleveland? Uh, that's right. Also says that you're in the habit of passing out phony checks for large amounts and not to accept any of them. Oh, well... You nearly caught... What was that, Porter? Nothing, sir. Nothing. You nearly caused a panic among the passengers. Hmm. The time is at hand. They got to worrying about a wreck or something. Oh, that, that, that's terrible. Don't tell my nephew. What did you do it for? I don't know. It's sort of a spiritual call. But I'm entirely normal now, and if you'll allow me to go to my drawing room, I give you my word of honor not to cause you any more trouble. How are you feeling? Fine. Entirely over it. It's quite gone now. Here, let me pay you for the trouble. No, no. We don't want your money. But I'm sorry you've got this disease. Thank you very much. Let me give you the rest of the stickers. This whole thing is so humiliating to me. Oh, I just hope we can keep it out of the newspapers. I'll take care of that. Remember, boys, not a word about this to anybody. If you'll just go to your drawing room and rest, Mr. Clark, I'm sure you'll be well taken care of. The reason I'm taking you back, Oliver, is on account of your wife. I see. I see. There's no need to have the innocent suffer with the guilty. Now, I have to change my plan of campaign. The first thing to do is to get rid of the lover. Eliminate him. Now, get out your pencil. We're going to draw up a contract between Oscar Jaffe and Lily Garland. 
OJ, stop chasing rainbows. Make it out in legal form. She's going to sign a contract with me before she leaves this train. Listen, OJ, if you'll allow me to presume... What now? Now, I know this may cost me my job, but if you ask me, we're not getting anywhere. What? What we need is a play. Something she can read, see herself walking up and down the stage in. I'll find a play. Where? You can't pull one out of a hat. I was born under the sign of Sagittarius. That's the archer. You draw up that contract. Wait a minute. That may be Lily now. Come in. Excuse us, please. Is that him? Maestro. What is this? Now run along. We're busy. Stop that, Oliver. You know I always see people. What is it you wish, gentlemen? Ah, Himmel. Maestro, this is a great honor. Spit it out. Maestro, I want to say... Maestro, perhaps you have seen us sometime. Oh, actors? Nine, nine. We are belonging to the Passion Play. The Oberammergau Players? Yeah. I should have recognized you. The Oberammergau players are the purest branch of the theater. Oliver, stand up! Hello, boys. They are the only true actors we have left. Not like our cheap Broadway hams. They are devoted to their art from infancy. Yeah, I see. I am the Judas. Yeah, yeah, he's the Judas. I am the Porsche's yes, pilot. Yes, yes. Now, 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 how do you boys like the United States? We don't like it so good. We've had lots of troubles. A manager has run away with all our money. Mm-hmm. And now you want to borrow some. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you see, we got nothing to eat till we get on the boat. Oh, moochers. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Sit down, gentlemen. Sit down. Sit down. Oliver, it's an inspiration. At the eleventh hour, with my back against the wall. How much money do you need, gentlemen? Uh, 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 Fifty-four dollars. Give it to them, Oliver. What? We don't even know these people. While you were chatting over here, my mind was active. The passion play, the greatest drama of the ages. At last I found something that is worthy of me. OJ, can I speak to you a moment? Come on, boys, get out. Ach, du lieber! Was ist das? Was ist das? OJ, I've got to speak to you alone. What? Are you crazy? Never mind who's crazy. Go on, boys, I'll attend to you later. Whew! I thought you were going to sign them up. Of course I'm going to sign them up. Wait a minute, OJ. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, now, now OJ, I'm going to... Call them back! Responsibility. Now, now, I know you won't believe me, but I'm more than just an employee. I'm the best friend you've got on Earth. Now go easy, Oliver. Remember your heart. I'm not going to let you do it. You've done enough. I'm not going to let you get mixed up with any phony art. Now, the trouble with you is you don't know what's happened to the public in the last three years. Well, I'll tell you, I know I've had my ear to the ground like an Indian. This is what they want, and I'm going to give it to them. Ah, at least we won't have to worry about any goose chase with Lily Garland. Well, of course I want it for her. Why else do you suppose I got it? The passion play? It fits her like a glove. What a Magdalene she'll make. It's a perfect piece of casting. <laughs> Wait till I tell her. Oliver, our troubles are over. Oh, are they? Where are you going to get a quarter of a million dollars to produce a spectacle like that? By waving your magic wand? Don't talk about money matters now, Oliver. Do you mind? I don't care if it kills me. Ugh. Is it all right for you to be out here, Mr. Clark? Yes, yes, thank you, Porter. I'm, I'm, I'm quite all right. Yes, but the boys are having an awful time getting those stickers down. Porter, have you got any bicarbonate of soda? 
Yes, sir. Get me some in a hurry. If you're into stress, I have just the thing. No, thank you. You're in the theatrical business, aren't you? I've often thought I'd like to devote myself to the theater. Uh, would you think there might be a place for me? Oh, yes. Probably fill a long-felt want. That's what I thought. It might solve my financial difficulties, too. You know, when one has so much cash lying around, it becomes a problem how to invest it. Don't you think? I have terrible headaches just thinking about it. Oh, that's too bad. Why, why, why you haven't taken your tablet yet. They're, they're really very good. Thank you. I manufacture them myself. That's our ad in the Saturday Evening Post. This is your ad? Yes, we're one of their biggest advertisers. Wow, well, and, and your name is... Clark Matthew J. Clark. You see, Mr. Clark, in the theatrical business, there are no headaches. No? Oh, no. Is that so? <laughs> George, why haven't you ever asked me to marry you? What? I had no idea you'd be interested. George, let's elope. Why elope? There's no one stopping us. What's the program, Rachelou? Shh! We're before Waterloo, with Sheridan 20 miles away. But we can't wait for that now. Stand by, Owen. Where's Oliver? He's probably hiding. Who can blame him? Here, help me out with this sling. Hurry up, tie it behind my neck. What for? There's nothing wrong with your arm, sire. This is a little bit of strategy, in case that young ruffian in there gets violent. Hold yourself in readiness. What are you going to do? I have got to break a human heart. How little you know of the real Lily Garland, George. I've died so often, made love so much on the stage that I've lost track of what's real. Well, what is real? A house. A home with a little attic and a cookie jar and a doorstep and oh, little feet pattering up and down. <gasps> oh. I thought it was your voice, Lily. I just came to say hello. I don't want to talk to you, Oscar. Please go. I've nothing to say to you. I don't want to hear anything you have to say to me. I'm warning you about bothering Miss Garland, and I mean it. No violence, George. He'll go. Listen, let me attend to this. No. Sit down. He's got to get out. A public fight would finish me. Oh, he'd love nothing better than to splash our names on the front pages. Let him throw me out, Lily. It would be the final irony. I came here out of a gallant mood to congratulate you. And you can get right out again. You've no right here. No right? Doesn't he know about us? I thought everybody knew. It was one of the great romances of our time. You! Bind the arm! I broke it in Chicago. All right, Oscar. You've done your usual slimy trick. You could never stand to see anything sweet or decent in my life. Well, you couldn't wait to come in here and blab everything. Blab? I'm proud of every hour that we've spent together. So should you be. What's happened to you? Are you trying to hoodwink this... Child, I gave you your chance. Stop! Oh, don't start hammering on me. I can't stand it. Comfort her, sir. It is your privilege. Lying to me? Every minute with every breath, lying to me? Yes. I tried to save you pain. I lied, yes, only to save you. <laughs> That's from Sappho. Oh, get out! I hate him. I say it right to his face. I loathe and despise him. I, I, I hate the ground he walks on. He's part of something horrible in my life. George, don't leave me with him. What an exit. Not a word. That's what we should have had in the heart of Kentucky when Michael leaves Mary Jo in the first act. Go and crawl back under your stone or, or wherever you came from. 
I'll be back in a few minutes with a little surprise. Something I've been promising you for seven years. Oh, and I just played a scene. Sardou might have written it. I have her in the perfect mood, and we must strike at once. Where's Oliver with that contract? Let's hurry. Oliver, Come on. Please. We've got to get at it. Oliver! Oliver! Oh, you're back. All ready to forgive me? No. I don't care to be forgiven by you. You won't be. I came for my hat. Get it and get out. It happens that you're sitting on it. No! Why do people keep hammering at me? Hammering and hammering! You're hysterical. It happens I'm calm as a fish. Lying to me. Swearing on your love and honor. You're a fake. <laughs> I'm a fake. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, oh, I'll tell you. I have lied to you. What? All those opera tenors, acrobats, th that Italian bicycle rider I told you about. They're all lies. The only man in my life was that cavalier in there, Oscar Jaffe. What are you trying to tell me? I was completely loyal to him. Loyal? Huh. Of course. He watched me like a hawk. And you wanted my respect. Who cares about your respect? I'm too big to be respected. Men I've known have understood that. Men you've known? Jaffe, you mean? Yes, Jaffe. He'll tell you what I am. A first-class passenger entitled to privileges. Oh, an artist. You're darn tootin' I am. George? You bore me. Don't worry. It won't be for long. My last words to you are that I hate you. I despise you. Now you get out of here. Oh. Where did he go? Oh. Why do they keep hammering at me? Hammering and hammering. Oh, Sadie. I'm all... Come on. Give me my makeup. Stop pushing me. Come on, Owen. We've got to find that... Oh. Well, there goes Georgie. <laughs> that eliminates the lover. Come on, Owen. Get all of her with that contract. I'll do my best, sire, but we've crossed the river and I've lost the scent. Hello, Sadie. I'm surprised you haven't been around to see me. <laughs> <laughs> Same old rosy cheeks. Miss Garland is taking a nap. Poor child. No one understands her. Now listen, Sadie. Always take care of her. Promise me that. She's very delicate. I think I'll sit. Oh, oh I'm sorry if I woke you up. Get out of here, Sadie. He sneaked in through that door. I know. I'll call you if I need you. What do you want, Scorpion? If it makes you any happier to call me names, go ahead. Oscar, you're complete! The most horrible excuse for a human being that ever walked on two legs. You've always misunderstood me, Lily. No matter what I said, if he'd been a lover, a real man, he'd have taken you in his arms. He'd have been tender. Instead of that, he stalked out of the room, like the Reverend Henry Davidson in rain. Your philosophy of love doesn't interest me, Mr. Jaffe. I wish I could dismiss it like that, but I can't. When I love a woman, I'm an oriental. It never goes, it never dies. Fooey. Love blinded me. That was the trouble between us as producer and artiste. Oh, so that's what it was, was it? Oh, how about your name in electric lights bigger than everybody's? Your delusion that you were a Shakespeare and a Napoleon and a Grand Lama of Tibet all rolled into one. You're absolutely right. What? I'm big enough to admit it. I never appreciated your real greatness till I'd lost you. How small, how cheap. 
What egotism not to know that it was Lily Garland instead of Oscar Jaffe that really mattered. When you ran around telling people that you'd put chalk marks on the stage so I'd know where to stand? Oh, that you had to teach me how to talk? Like a parrot? It was despicable. I could cut my throat. Well, if you did, grease paint would run out of it. Oh, that's the trouble with you, Oscar. With both of us. Oh, we're not people. We're lithographs. Oh, we don't know anything about love unless it's been written and, and rehearsed. <laughs> we're only real in between curtains. <laughs> Lily, you're crying. Sure. I, I dare not a faucet. It's that sort of scene. That's the devil of it. That's the pity of it, you mean. Those movies you were in? A sacrilege, throwing you away on things like that. When I left that movie house, I felt some magnificent ruby had been thrown into a platter of lard. You put yourself back ten years, but we can mend all that. You'll be greater than ever, Lily Garland. Oh, listen, Oscar. If all this adagio is by any chance preliminary to a contract, you can save your breath. What do you mean, contract? Oh, what are you talking about? You'd give anything to get my name on a contract. I came in here with a dream we both had long ago. The last step of the Golden Stair. The courtesan. The great courtesan roll. Oh, look out! Look out! Well, what is it this time? The big drama about Hairpin Annie, the pride of the gas house? No, Lily. This happens to be about the greatest woman of all time. Just her memory has kept the world weeping for centuries. The Magdalene. You mean that play by Suderman? Suderman? That German hack? Listen to me, Lily. I'm going to put on The Passion Play in New York with Lily Garland as the Magdalene. I've had it up my sleeve all this time, waiting for the right moment. The wickedest woman of her age. Sensual, heartless, but beautiful. Corrupting everything she touches. Running the gamut from the gutter to glory. Can you see her, Lily? This little wanton ending up in tears at the foot of the cross. I'm going to have Judas strangle himself with her hair. No, no, no. no wait, wait. Why not have Judas drink the poison that was intended for me? Lily, that's an inspiration. Go on while you're in the creative mood. Well, I'll tell you how I can see the whole thing. I can see the Magdalene as a woman who was an aristocrat at the beginning, and after being heartbroken by the some man she loved madly and trusted, she went down, 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 down into the depths, hating and despising all men, laughing at them so cruel, so terrible. Lily, if this play runs for five years, I won't make a dollar. You can have all the money. All I want to do is to stagger New York. A desert scene with a hundred camels. And Rio San brought from the Holy Land. I'm going to have a Babylonian banquet with your slaves all around you. You're covered in emeralds in that scene from head to foot and nothing else Suddenly, you catch sight of your greatest menace, the soothsayer. Forty dollars a week. Nevertheless, you go directly into your snake dance. It's terrific, but it's nothing compared to the finish, where you stand in rags, and the Emperor Nero himself offers you half his empire. You answer him with one of the greatest speeches ever written in the history of literature, with all the lights pouring down on you, transfigured by love and sacrifice, and the last we see of you is this pathetic little figure selling Olives in the market. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, you're crazy. What do you mean? Oh, coming in here with camels and sand from the Holy Land, you're a scream. You're going to put on the passion play. 
Oh, my heavens, you haven't a hundred dollars to your name. But I can raise a million. Two million! Oh, yes. And I know how you intend to raise it. Get my name on a contract. Shake down some new angel on the strength of my reputation. No, thank you. I'm through being your meal ticket. It's a lie! You've been listening to my enemies. I've been listening to Mr. Oliver Webb, who broke in here with some sob story that you were going to commit suicide unless I took pity on you. Well, go and commit it. It would be a blessing to everybody concerned. What the... Mr. Webb, he is no longer with me. I... Shut up! I've had enough of your lies! I'm offering you a last chance to become immortal. Thanks. I've decided to stay mortal with a responsible management. Who? Max Jacobs. (gasps) I can't believe it. No? Read the papers tomorrow, then. Why do you think I left Hollywood? Max Jacobs? He's a thief! Illiterate! He can barely write his own name! He writes it on checks, all right. Great big checks, too. (laughs) So that's what it is. Money. If I jingled ten or fifteen thousand dollars in front of your nose, your mouth would begin to water. You'd start drooling and squealing. Gimme, 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 gimme! That's right, Oscar. Now get out before I have the porter throw you off the train. You'll see who's going to be thrown off this train, traveling with a gigolo. Get out, you fake, you you swindler. Stop kicking at me, you cheap little shop girl. Get out before I call the conductor. Call the conductor. I'll tell the world who's a fake. You are. Get away from me. I taught you everything you know, even your name. Lily Garland. I gave you that. (gasps) As there's justice in heaven, Mildred Plotka, you will end up where you belong, in the burlesque houses. Get out of here! You coward! Who's a coward? Oh, you! No, I'll never get a Owen, where's that scoundrel Webb? Selling me out behind my back. I'll strangle him with these bare hands. So help me if I go to the chair for it. Okay. Come in, you gray rat! Shh, shh, shh. Okay, do you know who I've got with me? Matthew J. Clark, the patent medicine king. I've talked him into financing the play from a religious angle. You can write your own ticket. Millions! Where is he? Just outside the door. Show him in. Come in, Mr. Clark. Mr. Jaffe, Mr. Clark. How do you do, sir? Oh, Mr. Webb has told me all about you and your work. I'm glad to meet such a noble and pious man. That's very kind of you, sir. It's unusual to find a man of your profession interested in religion. What is your denomination? I'm proud and happy to say, sir, that I am a... Hey, Bab. Yes, a Baptist. Will you sit down, please? You got some more telegraph blanks? Yes, sir. I want to send another one to John Ringling. I'm in the market for 25 camels, several elephants, and an ibis. A what? That is the royal bird of Egypt. Give me the rock-bottom price. Yes, sir. And sign it, Oscar Jaffe. Right. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Oh, say, OJ, where are you going to house these monsters? I'm going to construct a small zoo next to the green room. I wish I knew the name of the Sultan of Turkey. I don't suppose you know it, do you? No, not offhand. What sort of didos are you casting him for? I don't want him, you fool. I want his dervishes, the whirling ones. I want a dozen of them. Now go and get his address. I'll go and ask the conductor. Owen, something tells me you're not educated enough for this sort of thing. I'll have to hire some professor. Save your dough, sire. I yield the lamp of learning to no one. Owen, did you see Lily? I harped on that chick for half an hour. Go get her, Owen. Don't fail me. 
I'll bring her if I have to bring her on a stretcher. Where are you going, Owen? I'm detouring over the Alps again. How did you get on, OJ? Listen, Oliver. I want to tell you something. I don't quite trust that man Clark. I want you to hop off the train at Cleveland and cash that check so I can give Lily her pound of flesh. Get out your pen so I can endorse it. Uh, I don't want to brag, OJ, but I'd just like to point out that little Oliver Webb delivers in a pinch. I'm thinking of promoting you, Oliver. We'll have to get you a secretary, a little fat one that you can boss around all by yourself. (laughs) You're not bad looking, you know, if you'd only burn that hat. Now, run along, Oliver, and leave me alone. I'm very busy. It's outrageous, that's what it is. But dear, it isn't the conductor's fault. What happened? We were sitting here and for no reason at all, this horrible old man rushed in and stuck this sticker on the window. He's loose again. Did you see him? No, sir. He's just up and down with those stickers like a ghost. But we confiscated the last of his stickers. I reckon he fished them out of the trash. Our lives aren't safe with that creature on the loose. (sighs) Don't worry. They're taking him off at Cleveland. We'll be there soon. Can't find him anywhere, Cap. All right. Keep on the job. You take these people into their car and see that they're well taken care of. Happy days are here again. The skies above are clear again. (sighs) Is that the new one? No, same one. Just had it cleaned and blacked. Personally, I prefer a derby. No, I, I mean the sticker. No, it's the same one. Happy days are here. Say, we're on time, aren't we? Oh, yes. He's not causing Mr. Jaffe any trouble, is he? Who? The gentleman in drawing room D. Mr. Clark? Not at all. Happy days are here. I see you know his name, all right. Do you happen to know where he's hiding? No, I don't. Who are you talking about? Mr. Clark. I've looked over every inch of this train and I can't find him. <laughs> who, who, who's after him? Well, we're trying to keep it undercover, but it's a pretty sad case all around. What are you talking about? Clark! He's the one who keeps putting up all these stickers. It's an infamous lie! I'm not going to argue with you, but we caught him red handed. Here, read this telegram. <laughs> And if you happen to run into him again, just engage him in conversation. And don't let on that you know he's crazy. Don't be frightened, because he's perfectly harmless. Come on, Bob, we'll go through this train with a fine-tooth comb. I don't know, Owen. Signing another contract with Oscar, it's like... Come on, pull yourself together. Here's the historic quill. Look out! You're dripping ink and ruining my negligee. (sighs) Owen, it's like jumping off a cliff. What are you talking about? That's not a contract. It's a coronation. Barrels of rubies, enormous carpets for your pretty feet, onyx bathtubs... Slews of Mambadons at your beck and call. No, that's not what I mean. Come on, sign it now while the sap is flowing. Just wait a minute. I want to run through it once more. (sighs) Okay, I'll be out in the vestibule. Has she signed yet? Not yet, but she's going to. Listen, we've been fooled. That fellow, he's a lunatic. What fellow is that, pal? Clark, our backer. Oh, it's Bodkins. What are you going to do? Me? I'm going to get plastered. You're going to get plastered? (laughs) Give me that. Now, Oliver, remember your heart. You know what the doctor said. Say, what is this? Just a formality. We're looking for Mr. Clark. Well, you got the wrong room. What kind of fellow is this man, Clark? Oh, very religious and a little eccentric. Is anybody in danger? No, 
but we do want to get him off the train before we leave here. Yes, I can't see you now, gentlemen. I'm busy. What are you doing there? As it happens, I'm reading the Bible. It's him. Get him! Owen! Oliver! What are you trying to do? Let him go, you fool. That's Oscar Jaffe. Owen, they're trying to strangle me. They can't do that to a theater personality. All right, I didn't know it was Mr. Jaffe. I'm, I'm sure you'll excuse this mistake, but there is a lunatic on board, I'm sorry to say, and we're trying to track him down. A lunatic? <laughs> That's rather interesting. Yes, a fellow named Clark. He had drawing room J, right in this car. He's hiding from us, and he's given us the slip. He's harmless. There's nothing to worry about. Oscar, what's Clark, going on? What Clark? That's not Mr. Clark, the patent medicine man. Yes, a sad case. They've had him away for over a year, but he escaped from the asylum. I hope you'll overlook the inconvenience, sir. Oh! <sighs> Lily, I've been bamboozled. I didn't have... Mr. To... Jaffe, just... this is the last time I'm ever going to speak to you. Lily, my beloved... Well, you Please. almost made a fool out of Lily Garland. If you ever bother me again, I'll get a gun and shoot you. Wait a minute. It's going wrong. I'm dizzy. Oliver. No, I'm you crazy. You fake. You lunatic. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, open the window. I'm hot. I can't stand it. I'm going to break down. Hello, Lily. Max Jacobs. Oh, Maxie, Maxie, Maxie. Oh, my sweetheart. My darling. My angel. I got a new Somerset mom play for you. Just came out by plane. Oh, sweet. That's divine. That's marvelous. Um, in. The Black Watch, sire, with their bagpipes. I suppose you're both drunk. Drunk or sober, I'm here, ain't I? Okay, I'm in no mood for a lot of fuzzy lamentations. I won't keep you long, Owen. Just a few words. There's nothing more to say. I've eaten dirt and crawled on my face through the mud till I'm sick. I got some pride, you know. <laughs> That's the final touch. Pneumonia. It's typical of my career that in the great crisis of life, I should stand flanked by two incompetent alcoholics. What's this? I'm sorry, but I I didn't mean for you to see it. Give me that. Now, you know why I called you. Please. Yes, to say goodbye. Owen, he's got a gun. <sighs> Owen? He's asleep. That's just like the Irish. They always fail you in a pinch. <laughs> Listen, you foul Corsican. I've been skinned alive 40 times under your banner. Cut it out, Owen. Do you remember the day, not long ago, when I was Oscar Jaffe? Stop it, please. My outer office filled with celebrities, cabinet ministers... Say, Oscar, I ain't hearing a word you say until you put away that fouling piece. Hey, please, let's act like grown-ups for a change. Yesterday, Oscar Jaffe, the wizard of Broadway. Tomorrow, a foolish old pest haunting the theater lobbies on other managers' first nights. You wouldn't want to see me like that, boys. <laughs> You'll remember me whenever you hear that wild sound in the night. This is screwy. I'm leaving. Stop it. I can't stand any more joking. You've made a drunkard out of me. Wait for me, Owen. <laughs> Goodbye, pale messenger of... Cold 
passport to the great unknown. Mr. Jaffe, don't do it! Just an act. He'd keep it up for three weeks if we stuck around. Hear those banshees? I don't like that. Kill himself. He'll outlive us all. They always do. It's a dark night full of unfortunate sounds. What was that? He's faking. Owen! Oliver! I've been shot! He did it, that lunatic! Excuse me. Give me that gun. Where'd he get you? I don't know. I'm bleeding. Lie down. Easy now. Take it easy. I'll get a doctor. Don't move. I did it in self-defense. He, he, he had the gun and pointed it at me. It was his life or mine. Owen, I was aiming at myself. He grabbed the gun away from me and shot me. That's the, the final irony. Killed by a lunatic. Oscar, is there anything we can do? Nothing. No prayers. No, no, don't talk like that. They can't hurt you. You'll be on your feet at the count of nine, you old wounded lion. I got a doctor. Uh, uh, He's coming in. How is he? Is he breathing? Gentlemen, I didn't mean to... Keep away from him. Stay put or I'll crack you. Gentlemen, it was all a mistake. Don't leave me now, boys. Never. Anything in the world you say, I'll do. Maestro, maestro. Keep them out, conductor. Keep them Germans out. Open up here. Here's the doctor. Here's the doctor. Hurry, doctor. He's dying. Maestro. Now you'll have to get out of here. He is our friend. We have a contract with Mr. Jaffe. Right in the corner where you are. Right in the corner where you are. There you are. Come with us. Right in the corner where you are. So often the case, lots of fright and no damage. You mean it isn't serious, Doctor? Hardly penetrated the surface. What do you mean? I'm weak! It must be internal injuries! This is the worst I've ever been through. You can go back to bed now. You'll be as good as ever in the morning. (sighs) Come on, OJ. I'll help you to your drawing room. No! No! Oh, come on. The doctor says you're in fine fettle. Owen, Oliver, I have an inspiration. Overwhelming. OJ, no more shenanigans. You got that contract? What? She'll sign it this time. She loves me. I could tell that through her screaming. I must reach that love somehow. Bring her to her senses. Boys, this is the last thing I'll ever ask of you. Go on, Owen, tell her I'm dying. And don't overact. Stand by. I'll get her, Daisy. It's a Jaffe production. Come on, Oliver. We're going into action. Here, set that chair. Center. Wait wait a minute. A little bit off center. Fix the lights. We're going to do this like the last act of Camille. We'll get it exactly, OJ. Is the light hitting me? How's that? Perfect. I can't believe it. I couldn't believe it either when I heard it. Hurry, Lily. I'll be right there. Oliver, remember what I told you. She's coming. Here he is. Oh, where is he? Oscar. Who's that? It's Lily. Bring her to me. I'm here. My poor Oscar. Speak. Speak to me. I'm going to go mad. The doctor says it went straight through the heart. He can't talk much. Oh. Who is that? Crying. It's Lily. Lily Garland. Lily. 
Give me your hand. Where's your hand? Oh, why did you do this? Why did you do this terrible thing? It was for the best, Lily. Everyone left. Those that I loved and needed. It's getting dark. Don't go for a little while. Oscar, I did it. I drove you to it. Oh, dear, lovely Lily. No tears. It wasn't your fault. I only wish I could have seen you once more. Held you once. Oliver? Yes? Where's the contract? The last one I drew up with Lily Garland. Here it is. Boys, can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. I want this buried with me on my body, next to my heart, when it has stopped beating. No, no. Where is she? Is she still here? I'm here, beside you. Oh, it's hard to die. Here. Between nowhere and nowhere. I should have waited till I was back in the theater, amongst the dust and echoes that I loved. Oliver? Yes? Where's the contract? Here it is. Ask her. Ask her if she'd mind putting her name on it. Lily, it's his last request. Yes, yes, give it to me. Here's a pen. Sign on the dotted line. Hurry, while I can still see. Let me in there, I'm Max Jacobs. Lily, look out what you're doing. You're too late, Max Mendelbaum! <gasps> Oscar! D'Artagnan rides again! been looking forward to this little occasion for some time. There's no thrill in the world like launching a new play. But I want you to realize one thing. No matter what I may say, no matter what I may do on this stage during our work, I love you all. Oliver, call the rehearsal. Act one. Places, please. No, we will start with Miss Garland's entrance. Miss Garland? Good morning, Miss Schultz. Good morning, Miss Garland. Now, don't be nervous, child. You are Betty Ann, this ragged little thing they found wandering in the cotton fields. Yes, Oscar. And Colonel Merriweather brings you into this beautiful southern mansion. Yes, I know, Oscar. Places, please! Make your entrance. ting a ling a ling a ling Colonel Merriweather, why are you all looking at me so strange? Stop! Let's do this thing correctly. You've been in Hollywood too long. I think you've forgotten a lot of things. Give me some chalk. Oscar? I want it distinctly understood. Now, I'll show you how it's done in the theater. Uh, now, when you enter, you follow this line here, and you stop right there. Oscar! One. Then you come over here. Oscar? Here we go again, Oliver. Living through the darkest Africa. Everyone else in Hollywood would give their souls to have me. Oscar! Right. You can't do this to me! <laughs> The makers of Canwell Soups were proud to present the Narada Radio Company in the Canwell Playhouse presentation of 20th Century. It was originally broadcast March 24th, 1939. Our present day cast was made up of the following players. 
Les Marston as Oscar Jaffe, Rhiannon McAfee as Lily Garland, Dana Gonsalves as Owen O'Malley, Pete Lutz as Oliver Webb and McGonagall, Lothar Tuppen as Max Jacobs, Lloyd, and German actor number one, John Bell as Clark and the Cop, Rachel Pulliam as Sadie, Tom Conkle as George Smith, Carl Thomas as Uncle Rufus and the Porter, Larry Groby as the conductor, Jezere Kessler as Anita and Miss Schultz, Gino C. Vianelli as Flanagan, Pop, and German actor two, Victoria Fonsky as Valerie and the Woman on the Train, Jason D. Johnson as Father and the Man on the Train, and Jack Ward as Stanley, the Sheriff, and the Western Union Man, with additional voices by members of the cast. The 20th Century Screenplay was written by Ben Hecht, Charles MacArthur, Preston Sturges, and Gene Fowler. The present-day production was directed and produced by Pete Lutz, especially for Sonic Summerstock Playhouse 2022. This is Tom Conkle speaking, and this was a 63 audio production recorded over Zoom in California, Alabama, Texas, and Nova Scotia, and mixed and mastered in Corpus Christi, Texas. This is the Mutual Audio Network. Sixty-three audio. This is mutual. And once again, a fantastic performance from the Narada Radio Company with their adaptation of Twentieth Century. Mr. Lutz and his players will join us again later in the season, but for next week. Please secure your tickets for a double feature of treats, including Campfire Radio Theatre's official recreation of The Road Ends at the Sea from CBC's Nightfall and Fugue in C Minor from Soul Twin Audio. And that concludes this week's performance of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, features, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their respective copyright holders and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society and a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network and any shows that continue their run must receive express permission from all parties involved. Join us next week for another new classic. With thanks to our announcer, Jack Ward, I'm your host, David Alt. Good night.
You're listening to a Sonic Cinema production. from. Some say he's not a man. Some say he's a force. Not of nature, but of something more primal than that. He's the acid taste of vengeance you can't quite swallow down in a town that's besieged by fear an unbreathed regret. Others say he was a man who wouldn't rest until all the pain in the world was fed back to those who mined it out of others. He's only known by one name, from county to county, in the hours past dawn, and in the haze-filled air, you'll see him walking towards you if you keep secrets, if you harm folks. He's the drifter. And he won't stop till sorrow's end. A weird western series from Jeffrey Billard starring The Drifter. From Audio Groove Cats and the Amigo Collective. Coming 2023 only on Mutual with episode one, Before a Wind. <laughs> 